Hi everybody, welcome to today's session of Ask Octopus. Uh, today uh, we're going to be looking at answering uh, a question from you um, and we have Ryan and Bob today. Hello. Hello. Nice guys. And today one of the questions and uh, the question I'm going to address is how to install Octopus and I'll take you through some of the requirements um, and some of the things that, that, that will help you out. I mean with this I install Octopus sometimes five to ten times a week you know you guys must be the same yeah i pretty much have it automated at this point yeah see that's that so that but obviously you know want to take it through and and and, uh, and show everybody here so just before we jump into the session uh i'd like to just you know some of the things that to consider before you jump in um and actually install octopus is is Server, uh, it does install on uh, Windows Server. Um, there are talks of it potentially being on Linux, but still seems really strange to me. Um, and it run on anything above Server 2008 SP2, uh, SQL 2008 uh, and above. Uh, it also supports RDS, uh, AWS RDS, and SQL um, Azure, uh, or Azure SQL. Uh, so it does do that. So you can install it anywhere. Really, is you know, it could be on prem. It could be up in the cloud. I would say if you are, I mean, if you are installing it on a two thousand, if you're running it on a SQL Server two thousand eight, um, I have a couple questions because it's going to get end of life this summer. So it's reaching their end of life, both two thousand eight and two thousand eight R two. So yeah, exactly. I mean, to be honest, at that point, get on and get SQL Express. Um, yeah, exactly. obviously, it doesn't have as much with you know ten gig restrictions now. Um, but yeah, I mean, obviously, from that, from an additional server spec, um, I generally start. Uh, if you're going real small, then I, you know, I actually have installed it on laptops before to get mm -hmm. familiar. Um, so to be honest, it doesn't need a lot of resources. Once you start ramping things up, then I, you, know, you can start with say two cores, um, two gig of RAM, uh, 10 gig of space. But generally, I, I've always been a fan of four cores, or, well, sorry, two cores, four gig of RAM, and 100 gig. That's our, not our official recommendation. That's just me, my experience through the years as a, as a uh, sysadmin and whatnot. Mm -hmm. what, what do you guys tend to go with? Uh, I have just, I, whenever I'm setting up a virtual machine, it's, it's pretty, minimal like uh i don't think I, I do like 64 gigs and then four gigs of ram like not, not, nothing but i'm not like using them every day they're more for demos and everything so i'm not pushing them too hard it's more of a just an easy default for me yeah i think two, i think about i think i typically do two two cores and eight gigs of ram and probably like 64 gigabytes of space like what, what ryan was saying yeah, the, the as long as you have, I think the having the multi core is probably the more important, more important thing. Uh, don't definitely don't run it on a single core is really the, the takeaway lesson. And then uh, definitely the more RAM that you you throw at it. I don't know if there's gonna be that big of a multiplier at that particular point. But uh, like you, like Ryan said, the more you, you put it under load, the more resources you're gonna have to devote to it. So. Yeah, well, that's it. and the thing I. I've always found is it scales really well. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, ultimately the more deployment targets, um, the more you know deployments you're doing. Um, then yeah, you know you can ramp that up. Uh, so you can start really really small, start on a laptop, and then you know eventually you could build up with a HA, but that's a HA massive cluster of eight. Um, but, but yeah, that's when you're looking uh, at much bigger installations. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to start. As you can see, there is no version of Octopus. I've got my page can't be displayed. I have. Um, my installation. One of the things is, is generally um, there's no harm in having uh, SQL uh, running locally initially, as if you're doing a proof of concept. But best practices definitely would be um, is, is is obviously is uh, on a separate SQL server. And once you get into production and are heavily ramping up, I would definitely consider um, a dedicated SQL. Um, you know, you start thinking about things like uh, SSD uh, and all those good stuff, but as you can see here, it will take you through a quick installation. I'd also recommend is once you start moving into a, like a production instance, is you have the ability to move where we store our task logs and the packages and the artifacts, moving those onto a uh, file share. So that way, if your Octopus VM were to ever get lost, as long as you have your master key, and you're, you're good to go. You can get back up and running within minutes, not, not hours. And this is it. It's uh, Octopus is now installed. Now we're going to go through and configure it. 
get started button um, and I have an existing queue. But what you can do is if you do want a, a, a trial key, you can uh, register on our site or contact sales at octopus.com. You can also do it through this, the interface as well, I believe. It will. Yes. Yep. So service count. Um, I'm a huge fan of it. This is running in my home lab. It's got a domain controller. I'm a huge fan of um, domain accounts. Uh, you can run it as local system, um, but I, I just I, I think it's just a sysadmin in the past that I'm just service accounts all the time. Um, but you can run it in, under the local system. You will. There are certain things like uh, certain permissions that you have to grant to it. And um, what I tend to do here is use a, a named service account and just set up the. Um, set up the required permissions. I will include a link to all this in the description of the video. We should, have you got a preference on local system versus service account? Uh, for POCs, I always would do a local system. Uh, it's not, it's not harming anything. But once you go to production, if you're running this in a in an enterprise level, then you should definitely have. My opinion, you should definitely be running as a service account with integrated security. This is one of the things here as well, is with the service account, is you're going to be looking at uh, SQL. Um, and one of the benefits of using a service account, particularly with a domain, is you can already set up the, uh, the service account to have access. Uh, if you want, you can actually set up a, a blank database and do it that way. Um, I'm maybe not following best practices here, but I've, I've got one that has uh, access to the full. So what I'll do here is Octopus Live Demo. Oh no, you jinxed it. <laughs> uh, here goes, it's uh, difficult. There we go, it did work, thankfully. Uh, <laughs> Didn't tempt the demo gods too much today. <laughs> yeah, I think I'm getting there, I'm getting past today. Um, oh, um, Oops, I went behind. There we go, and now it comes up with the, with the uh, web portal. Normally, I, you can bind this, and you can store your username and password in Octopus into, straight into the database, again, Active Directory, uh, username is nice and secure, Derek. And then that's it. You install, you go and grab a coffee, hopefully. <laughs> it's, uh, there it goes. There we go. There we go. I was going to say, it'll be like a quick coffee trip, huh? You're, you're running for that coffee. Oh, I don't <laughs> mind. I don't. Yeah, no, that's true. That's true. Um, and I mean, what we've got here is, is uh, we'll, we'll start since install and I'll just show some, some servers on the season as well as you can see. Ticking along nicely. One of the things, also, an alternative approach is um, if you're heavy into containers, like, uh, you can actually run this Octopus as a Docker container. Um, I've not actually used that a, a great deal. Um, do, do, you, do your customers, guys, do you have that? Um, you're doing a lot of containerization running Octopus. I haven't uh, heard of it out yeah. in the wild, um, but that just means I haven't talked to the people who are doing it. I'm sure somebody is out there doing it. Yeah, I would, I would agree. I think that someone out there is definitely doing it because we do get support tickets asking questions about it, but I haven't talked to those customers specifically. Yeah, I've got one doing it and it's, um, it's, it seems to be going pretty well. Um, and then we just set up, this is where you set up your bindings. In this mm -hmm. instance, I'm running on test web dot home dot local you can actually within here if you did want to uh, set up a https you come here and you could set up a, a generate a self sign certificate so if you're running on active directory you can go straight away and do a request and pull that in from ad um, and then you specify this and one of the things i'll just i'll do this as a little test for you um because what you can do is test web I'm just going to generate a self sign certificate. Yeah, great. Press OK. One of my favorite features here is also just the ability straight up just to remove HTTP um, and just go straight to HTTPS. Um, mm -hmm. It's a huge, I, I really like that. Um, and then that's it. Hit apply. And cross your fingers with the demo once again. <laughs> Yeah, it's actually, I have a, we have a certificate that we use for, for demos 
and I just use that and I as opposed to a self-signed one just because sometimes when you go to if you're not on the domain and you, you just navigate directly to a, a site that has a self-signed cert like you get stuff like that <laughs> yes that's true that's very very true um but that's you really um you've got this and one of the great things here is is you can um you can enable and uh, by default using the service account using a, a domain account and um, i have actually already used my domain account and activated the, the active directory authentication provider um from here you'll see it'll be a blank instance that's it very nice and um, and from there, you can log in and start enabling um, your authentication providers. Um, but there are a few other things that you need to think about. Um, and I'll do some follow-up sessions based on that, those. Okay. Thanks, Bob and Ryan, today for, for, for joining us. Um, but that was the end of the session. If you've got an interesting question, submit it um, at the following link. Um, Email us at supportoctopus.com or jump on Slack and post a, um, post a, a question. All right. Thanks, everybody. Yeah, thank you. Thank you.